Hi, this is Charlie Hesse from Tropical Birding and welcome to this virtual bird tour of South Africa. I lived here for nine years. My wife and son are both South African, so I've got a, quite a strong link to the place. Um, in my view, it's one of the best wildlife viewing countries in the world. Um, it's got astonishing bird life. You can see up to 500 species, including many endemics. Um, you can rack up a, a list of 50 to 60 mammal species, which is pretty difficult to compete with anywhere in the world. Um, it's amazing light, so it's really good for photography. Um, very wide variety of habitats that we visit and beautiful scenery. Um, and it's got a very good tourist, tourist infrastructure as well. Um, really good roads and really nice lodges. Um, some people are a little worried about security here, but uh, I've never spoke to anyone that hasn't felt uh, safe here. And we always um, do everything we need to to keep people safe. Um, this here is the national bird of South Africa, the blue crane, um, very stately bird. I'll be showing you um, some more pictures of it later on. Okay, here's a map of the country. Um, it's a tour in three sections. The first section is around uh, the Cape area. Um, we have about 10 days visiting various sites there. Then we fly up to Johannesburg and we visit um, Buckestrum in the montane grassland. Um, Kruger National Park down in Lofeld. And then finally, we finish the tour with an extension in KwaZulu Natal, uh, finishing in uh, um, the mountain kingdom of Lesotho and the Sani Pass. Okay, so we start the tour in Cape Town, sometimes called the Mother City, um, famous for Table Mountain. I spent my first year in South Africa here. Um, you don't see this shape from every angle, but uh, I lived in an area called Table View that had a wonderful view um, across. Um, we can start the tour with an optional um, pelagic trip from Simonstown. Um, it's not for everybody, it can be a little bit rough, but it's really one of the best pelagic trips in the world. Um, leaving Simonstown, you can start to see some Cape Gannets as you go out. Um, and then when you get out, it's really fantastic. There's so many uh, pelagic birds out there. You can see up to um, five species of uh, um, albatrosses, including this uh, black browed albatross, and lots of petrels and shearwaters, like the sunny shearwater and great shearwater. Okay, we're going to visit a penguin colony. There's a couple of different penguin colonies in the Cape Town area. Um, they're wonderful birds, they're very comical, uh, really fun to watch. Uh, they're quite sort of clumsy on land, but as, as soon as they uh, get out into the water, they become very, uh, very graceful, wonderful swimmers. Um, the, uh, the, the nesting colony is here, um, they make nests in the burrows, and when the parents come back, um, you see here it's getting mobbed by its, its chicks, they're begging for food. Um, also around the penguin colony, some other birds that you can see are the uh, African black oyster catcher here feeding on some uh, some shellfish, um, really beautiful uh, endemic birds. Okay, we're going to take a drive along to um, Cape Point, uh, Cape Peninsula. There's a nature reserve there, um, the Cape of Good Hope Nature Reserve, um, and there we'll see our first mammals. Um, here are some eland, which are the largest antelopes in the world. We can also see the Cape Mountain Zebra, it's a very uh, rare and um, endemic mammal. There's also some interesting reptiles out there, like this um, black girdled lizard. Um, when we get out to the point on the cliffs, you sometimes get um, Cape Cormorants uh, nesting. Okay, next we're going to go to the Strandfontein uh, Water Treatment Works, which are some of the best in the world for birds. There's thousands of flamingos there. Um, also get birds like pelicans, and lots of ducks, and shorebirds like this pied avocet. Next, we're going to go to the wonderful um, Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens, which are at the base of uh, uh, Table Mountain. It's wonderful walking around them. They have uh, lots of proteas in there, which are very popular with um, sunbirds, like this endemic orange-breasted sunbird and the beautiful uh, malachite sunbird. And um, you can also get this sunbird like um, Cape Sugarbird, which is in a different family, in an uh, endemic family. So those uh, family listing will want to see this one. Um, there's a resident pair of spotted eagle owls in the botanical gardens here. And usually we just find a gardener and ask them where they're roosting at that moment. 
Okay, next we're going to take a day trip up the West Coast to the West Coast National Park. There's a beautiful lagoon here called Langaban Lagoon. Um, and uh, in the in the National Park, there's a lot of uh, fainboss habitat. Some of the birds we're going to be looking for are the uh, Southern Black Koran and the beautiful uh, Black Harrier, which is really one of the most attractive uh, raptors in the world. Um, another bird we can see is a Bokmakiri, which is named after its, um, its very distinctive vocalization. Okay, that's the end of Cape Town. We're going to set off uh, east along the garden route and stop along the way um, in some Feinboss habitat with a lot of uh, rocks, um, looking for the Cape Rock Jumper. This is a really um, iconic uh, endemic species, really beautiful bird. Not always easy to find, but um, yeah, sometimes we get really good looks. We found this one very close and it gave us uh, a wonderful display of uh, preening uh, of it uh, sat on a rock. Okay, we're going to head into the Overberg area, which is a, a big area of agriculture with these um, big sweeping open habitats. Um, it's all uh, um, open fields. Um, here we look for the national bird, the blue crane. Uh, the very elegant birds, um, they became very, uh, very threatened, but it's a real conservation success story. Um, BirdLife South Africa um, cooperated with um, local landowners. They're mainly found on private land. Um, and they came up with a conservation plan and they've really uh, bounced back. Sometimes you're lucky enough to see them um, displaying and carrying on the wonderful things. It's very common to see them in fields with uh, sheep and cows. We're also going to be looking for the large Denim's Busted. Um, huge birds, one of the biggest flying birds in the world, really uh, spectacular. And there's a lot of common colorful uh, weavers and things as well, like this Cape Weaver and um, Southern Red Bishop. We're gonna go down into the De Huop Nature Reserve um, where we can see this um, beautiful mammal, the Bonte Bok. Bonte means pied or uh, multicolored and Bok is antelope. Um, they, they were on the edge of extinction these, but they also um, uh, had a um, conservation program which they um, did very well and now they're um, much more common. These like um, this uh, this Feinboss habitat as well. Another mammal that we can see here is a grey rebok. There's also some nice uh, endemic birds like this uh, grey winged francolin. Um, and uh, the Hoop Nature Reserve is also a very important site for the Cape Vulture, Cape Griffin. Um, when you get to the coast in Duhurp Nature Reserve, there's these beautiful white sand uh, dunes, and you can look over the sort of Indian Ocean. Um, it's just absolutely spectacular place. Um, at the right time of year, you can also stand on the dunes and look down. And you'll see these uh, southern right whales, which are, um, which are wintering there. Okay, we're going to move on to some forest further along the coast in the wilderness area. Um, there's a town further along called Neisner, and there's actually three species that um, uh, take their name from this town of Neisner. Uh, the Neisner Turaco. A Neisner woodpecker, and there's also a Neisner warbler, a little skulker. Um, but the wonderful forest there, we can see a lot of interesting birds, um, like this um, red-necked um, Franklin, which comes out on the edge. There's also some nice um, lakes there, which are very good places to look for kingfishers, like this Malachite kingfisher. Uh, really nice um, viewing blinds, that you can get quite close to these and get nice photos or videos. This is a rarer kingfisher called the half-collared kingfisher, which likes um, um, uh, forested streams. There's lots of interesting um, birds inside the forest, like this um, buff-spotted flufftail, really difficult bird to find, but uh, on occasion we have got lucky and found it. And also this uh, Narina trogon, uh, also quite a difficult bird to see. I often find them by um, uh, hearing their call. So it's beautiful red belly. Uh, green feathers on the back. Okay, um, we're now going to drive up over the Swartberg Pass and down into the Karoo habitat. Um, this is a very arid um, or semi-arid um, uh, habitat with these little uh, bushes. Got a lot of uh, um, wonderful birds there. We're going to stay in the Karoo National Park, really scenic place. 
and we will be right in the middle of it, um, staying in these um, chalets below, uh, beneath these mountains. Very good place for mammals. There's some really nice, uh, well-adapted mammals to this habitat called uh, uh, Hemsbok or Southern Oryx. And also uh, Springbok, um, which give their name to the South African rugby team. Very agile. Um, you can also see these um, red hartebeest. Hartebeest get their name from these uh, heart-shaped horns. Um, on one trip, we saw a um, male hartebeest really um, really fighting, got some video of it here. Um, but yeah, they really sort of butt heads like that, go down to their knees. Um, it was really, um, really quite fun to watch. They can even sort of uh, interlock their horns and really, uh, really wrestle. But yeah, wonderful sight. You can see they're really going for it here. <laughs> Uh, a few years ago, uh, lions were reintroduced to the Karoo National Park, and um, just afterwards we um, went in there on a tour. We came across two male lions lying in the road. Um, I sort of uh, maneuvered the car sort of side on across the road and uh, opened the windows and we started uh, taking pictures of them. And they sort of got up and started stretching and then they started walking towards the car. Um, we had the windows open, of course, um, to take photos and they got closer and closer, just a few meters away and we, uh, we wound up the windows. I mean, when these huge predators are looking you right in the eye, I mean, it really makes you feel quite small. It's quite a, it's quite a feeling. And they do very nice uh, night drives in Crewe National Park. And you can see some really fantastic nocturnal species like these aardwolves, and sometimes even uh, aardfark. Um, aard means earth and fark is pig, so it's like an earth pig. Some very nice birds in Crewe National Park as well. Um, largest bird in the world, the uh, ostrich. You can see here doing its sort of uh, courtship display, sort of, um, flapping its wings. There's some real little hidden treasures in the Karoo habitat, like this uh, endemic rufous-eared um, uh, warbler. And this um, cinnamon-breasted or copy warbler. Copy means like a little uh, rocky outcrop, but they like these um, rocky um, habitats. Um, really tough bird to see, but it's a real, it's a real big prize. Um, in other rocky areas, we can see the short-haired rock thrush. Um, there's a few little um, patches of uh, dry acacia trees here, and this, they've got some sort of dry, um, dry habitat species like this pirit batis, this um, fairy flycatcher. Um, it's a good place for larks as well, on these sort of open plains, and um, including some really rare species like this um, Sclater's lark. Okay, um, from uh, Karoo, we drive back to Cape Town, and then we jump on a plane and fly up to Joburg, Johannesburg. Um, it's a couple of hours away. Uh, from there, we're going to drive down uh, to Wackerstrom and then uh, in the montane grasslands, and then up to Kruger National Park in the Lowfeld. Um, from Joburg, we sort of uh, head south and we, uh, we can check some areas there for this uh, uh, blessbok, very closely related to the bontebok. Okay, down when we get to um, Wackerstrom, it's a good place to look for meerkats, um, these very um, charming animals. They've got this uh, habit of standing up on the hind legs. You get a sentry in the group that sort of keeps a lookout while the others uh, are feeding. But they're really fun fun animals to find. Um, yeah, really very, very popular, popular species. Um, we sometimes do night drives from Wackerstrom and sometimes we come across these spring hares, um, which sort of uh, hop around like a kangaroo. And um, sometimes we come across um, owls. These uh, local marsh owls even sort of come out uh, in winter during the day. Um, another bird that we're going to be looking for, the grey-crowned crane. Um, they breed on the wetlands in the area and in winter form big um, flocks. Here's another real iconic bird, the, uh, the secretary bird with these long, very long-legged raptor that sort of stalks through the long grass looking for prey. But yeah, really beautiful birds. This is another big target here called the southern bald ibis. Um, there's several species of bustards here, like this blue bustard or blue Quran. Quran is an uh, Afrikaans name for uh, a small bustard. 
And there's also a lot of uh, interesting lark species here. This is a spike-heeled lark, and we'll also be looking for some real rarities like Rudd's lark and Gorter's lark. Um, in some of the little uh, rocky copies, um, you can see birds like this uh, sentinel rock thrush. And down in the wetland, we sometimes see uh, African snipe. Okay, we've got a bit of a drive now. We're going to drive up to Kruger National Park. Um, it's about uh, 350 kilometers long by about uh, uh, 60 kilometers wide. It's the size of a small country. It's really you know, like 200, over 200 miles long. Um, it's really one of the premier national parks in Africa. It's very spectacular. It's sort of crisscrossed by several different rivers. Um, um, it's a good place to see the um, the big five. The big five were the big um, five dangerous animals uh, back in the days when people went hunting these amazing animals. Here's a big male. Um, we're just starting the car here and moving away from it. You've really got to be careful with these animals to give them space. Um, you can sometimes see these um, these elephants um, bathing as well. They're really a lot of fun to watch bathing. They sort of pull, uh, suck up water into their trunks and sort of spray it over themselves. They're really uh, fascinating animals. Um, the females um, form these matriarchal herds with a young and adolescent um, animals. Um, this was two male male elephants um, sparring in the road and when you come across one of these you, you, you've just got to stop they don't move out of the way they, they do so in a um, when they when they want to so yeah really uh, wonderful animals um, about I think it's over 10 percent of the um, world's population of African elephants are inside Kruger there's like sort of um, yeah, 11 or 12 thousand of these um, amazing beasts um, another member of the big five is the uh, the Cape Buffalo, another um, dangerous animal that you've got to keep an eye out for. They, they hang around in huge herds, hundreds um, of, uh, of individuals. Um, another one in the big five uh, are the rhinos. There's a black and white rhino in, um, in, in Kruger, but uh, you may have heard the international news that they're really suffering from uh, from poaching for, for their horn. In recent years, there have been a lot of them po poached. And uh, you can see this one here rolling around in the mud, but they're just really impressive um, animals. They're really one of my favorite animals in the world. Um, some years uh, are especially dry. It was one year where it, there was a real drought and all the water holes were really drying up. And we had this standoff between these African elephants a uh, white rhino and even a, hip, a hippo. Hippos don't normally come out of the water during the day, but yeah, sometimes they have to sort of move to um, to where there's water. But yeah, really uh, unusual scene here. Um, also in the big five is the uh, the lion. Uh, many lions in Kruger, and um, yeah, really impressive. They spend a lot of time sleeping, but occasionally get lucky and see some action, even even some uh, some uh, lion kills. And uh, here, my favorite of all, this is the, uh, the leopard, the fifth member of the big five. Um, it's a stunning cat, absolutely gorgeous. Um, Kruger's a very popular park, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, cars in there, um, but this can sometimes work to your advantage. You'll, if you see a big, um, little bit of a car jam, you'll, uh, they're often looking at something interesting like a le leopard up in a tree. So with the more, more people out looking for these things, you've got a better chance to see them. Um, they often um, spend time up in the trees, especially during the, during the day, and they'll even um, pull up their prey up into the tree to keep it away from lions and, and uh, this next animal. Um, this is a spotted hyena, really one of the most uh, successful um, predators and scavengers on the African continent. Um, they'll they've got very strong jaws which they'll uh, crack open bones and eat the marrow and they and, um, and groups of them will even chase lions off their prey okay they're the predators these are the prey with um this is a plains zebra very uh, photogenic animal um and then this is a giraffe um giraffes often have these um ox peckers on them uh, looking for um looking for ticks um sometimes they'll They'll go anywhere they need to, to to find them, even some pretty precarious places. Um, there's smaller antelopes as well, like these, uh, like this steenbok. Um, yeah, with so many predators and prey, you'll often get um, get kills and carcasses, which bring in um, vultures. And um, this is the largest vulture on the right, the lapid-faced vulture. 
and on the left a different species, a white-headed vulture. The vultures are also having a hard time now. There's a lot of poisoning um, of carcasses by people. Um, yeah, it's a very sad story. They've, a lot of them have become very um, threatened in recent years. And there's some other very nice um, raptors here, like this beautiful uh, battalure eagle. They have this very short tail and a very distinctive sort of tipping flight. And the name battalure comes from French, which means sort of uh, um, acrobat. Um, this is another one of the largest um, raptors called the Marshall Eagle, really spectacular bird. Um, most of the park, you have to stay in your in your vehicle because of the presence of dangerous animals. But um, on the, the bigger bridges over these large rivers, um, you can see that any dangerous animals coming. So you're allowed to get out here and, uh, and scan the river. Um, often below the, um, the bridges, uh, you get these huge Nile crocodiles. And it's a good place also to look for water birds like these um, yellow-billed storks. Um, also in the park, uh, another one of the uh, target birds is a cory bustard, um, which is one of the biggest flying birds in the world. Um, you can also get these very uh, sinister looking birds called the southern ground hornbill. Uh, really spectacular, almost like the Grim Reaper. They, they move around in, uh, in groups, um, family, family groups looking for uh, things to eat on the ground. Some other nice birds like the, uh, the magpie shrike. Um, we stay inside these um, uh, fence um, camps, um, which uh, keep out the dangerous animals and inside they're wonderful places to bird. Um, these are often quite common. This is a very tiny little owl called the African scops owl. Um, some other birds that we often see inside, like the yellow-billed hornbill, um, greater blue-eared starling, uh, grey-headed um, bushrake, and in, uh, in summer, the woodland kingfisher. Some of the smaller birds, like chin-spot batters, and even uh, things like brown-headed parrot. Um, it's not all mammals and birds. Sometimes you see some very fascinating um, reptiles, like this flat-necked chameleon. Um, we had this one crossing the road and we've got this very funny uh, way of walking. Okay, that is the end of the main trip. And then all now remains is to go on the extension down to KwaZulu Natal. This is where I lived for eight years down on the coast in KwaZulu Natal. So this is a real second home for me. Um, so we drive down from Johannesburg and then down to um, a park called Mpuzi. Um the Kwazulu Natal parks have always been um, uh, um, places to see the, the the southern white rhino. This is a, a species that became almost extinct in the past and was brought, brought back um, through effective conservation measures. But uh, now they're being um, they're being uh, persecuted again for their horn. Um, sometimes um, the water holes are good places to see these, and they come in and bathe in the. They sort of uh, have a mud bath scratch themselves on the uh, um, on the tree trunks. And um, this is a, a very typical species seen in Nkusi. It's called the Niala, very beautiful antelope with these uh, spiraling horns. Um, this is another um, mammal that comes down to sort of wallow in the mud, the, uh, the warthog. Um, even in the dry years when it's just like a big mud path, you get the uh, mud bath, you get these uh, little, little um, puddles of water left and you get um, mammals coming down to, to, to drink like this uh, slender mongoose. Uh, many other birds come in to drink as well, like these um, crested guinea fowl. It's only a couple of places in South Africa uh, where you get those and the uh, coastal KwaZulu Natal is one of them. Um, really funny little hairstyles. Um, also seen uh, this real uh, iconic uh, hammercop. Hammercop is also Afrikaans, means hammerhead. Um, see this very distinctive head shape. A um, lot of sunbirds uh, you can see in Mkuzi, like this scarlet chested sunbird, uh, white breasted sunbird, and a very rare and localized uh, near guard sunbird. Um, we drive around um, Mkuzi, uh, and uh, the car makes a wonderful uh, line for bird photography, so you can often get quite close to birds and get really nice photographs. There's another um, typical bird in Mkuzi, the red fronted pinker bird. Um, there's an area of sand forest in there with um, some real sand forest endemic birds, um, like this uh, bearded scrub robin and this really special uh, pink-throated twin spot, a um, really beautiful little bird. 
you can do um, night drives in Amkuzi as well. Um, and sometimes you can see some uh, some owl species like this southern white-faced owl, and barn owls, and several other species as well. Um, the the Mkuzi, um game reserve gets its uh, name from the Mkuzi River. Um, there's a story that goes um, there were some Zulu warriors returning from a battle, um, and there was a lot of water flowing in the river. And one of the warriors warned the other ones not to cross, um, and they ignored his warning. And they got swept away to their death. Um, the um, other warrior waited till the water subsided and then he crossed. Um, so they called this river the, the Warning River, the Mkuzi River, which also gives its name to the reserve. We're going to cross over on this uh, little bridge into the fig forest. And we, take in, we go in here with a local par armed park ranger because sometimes you can get dangerous animals in there. And this is our big target in there, the Pell's Fishing Owl mega bird in Africa, really one of the top targets uh, yeah, in this area. Okay, we're going to drive down um, to the coast um, to a place called St. Lucia. Um, one of the most famous animals there is the, the hippo. Um, very big population of hippos down there in the, the river mouth, and you also see a good place to see crocodiles. Um, Hippos are not in the Big Five, but they kill more people in Africa every year than uh, all the other members of the Big Five put together. They're really, they're called the second most dangerous animal in Africa after the mosquito. Very aggressive. If you come across one of these at night, you know, it's it's bad. <laughs> but during the day, they usually hang out in the water, um, sort of uh, hanging out in these, uh, in these groups, sometimes uh, feeding on uh, aquatic vegetation. Um, St. Lucia, um, the St. Lucia um, Reserve, uh, now called uh, Isimangaliso, is a, is a great place to see um, rhinos as well. In recent years, we've seen some young rhinos, which is really wonderful to see, uh, given their, um, the predicament they're in. Another really spectacular mammal that we can see here is the kudu. Um, on, on one occasion, we had two male kudu um, sparring with each other they sort of uh, interlock these spiraling horns and they um, sort of lock them together and try and push each other off balance but really impressive animals it's one of the biggest antelopes um this park is also very good for uh, for wetland birds um like this african jacana uh, collared pretting coal woolly necked stork um, and around the edge in the reed beds you can see this um, very localized uh, Southern brown throated weaver and uh, fantail widow bird. In the grasslands, we can also see some typical birds like the rufous snake lark. And there's some little forest patches as well with birds like the uh, yellow and tinker bird, this beautiful, uh, gorgeous bush shrike, and uh, red capped uh, robin chap. Sometimes we go out for a drive at night nearby and uh, we look for this um, rare swamp nightjar. Okay, we're going to drive up into the hills, into a we've stayed in town called uh, Shawi, and have a wonderful forest reserve there with a canopy platform. Um, sometimes we're lucky enough to see these uh, trumpeter hornbills just at eye level. Really, uh, really impressive birds. It's also a good place to look for this beautiful uh, purple crested turaco and uh, white eared uh, barnet. And down on the forest floor is a very uh, secretive bird, a very, um, very rare bird called the spotted ground thrush. Uh, they're very well camouflaged and they are um, very difficult to see uh, in the leaf litter. But sometimes you can hear them uh, tossing leaves around. Um, yeah, big, big target leaves. Uh, these are endangered and one of the reasons they are is because um, their nests are often um, predated by monkeys, by vervet monkeys. Um, it's a very interesting fact that um, they often um, survive in uh, patches of forest that have uh, African crowned eagles. And um, that's because these crowned eagles um, predate the monkeys and, and places with lower monkey densities um, have better breeding success for spotted ground thrushes. So yeah. Um, at the lodge we stay in a shawi in the garden sometimes we get this uh, wonderful uh, African uh, Wood owl. And we're going to visit another um, patch of forest nearby called Ungoye. And here we look for the rare uh, green barbet. And this is a, bir a bird that's found in East Africa. 
and then not again for thousands of kilometers until you get to this area. It's a very unusual isolated um, population. We're going to drive down to the coast now and out to this um, little town of Umtunzini. And there, um, many years ago, somebody planted a lot of uh, raffia palms. And these palm nut vultures uh, like to roost and, uh, and feed on the palm nuts. Uh, there's some nice mangroves down there where we look for this, um, this rare mangrove kingfisher. Uh, there's also a swamp forest where we can see the um, uh, black-throated wattle eye. Uh, only the female has a black throat, which is a male. But yeah, really beautiful bird. And also in these forests, we can see the um, violet-backed starling. Okay, next we're going to drive up towards the Drakensberg Mountains. Drakensberg means a dragon, and, and berg means mountain. It's dragon mountains. And below there's some very nice um, grasslands. Uh, where we can look for this extremely rare uh, wattled crane. It's going to be the third species of crane for the trip. Um, in summer, we can also see these very, uh, these long-tailed widow birds, which do this spectacular flight display. There's also a few nice uh, forest patches uh, where we can see rare birds, like this orange ground thrush or bush blackcap. Okay, we're going to drive up... Um, uh, towards Sunny Pass and the, uh, and, and, and the, and the kingdom of uh, Lesotho. On the way, there's some patches of protea, um, proteas, and here we look for the Gurney's sugarbird. Um, you can see a very sort of uh, rocky road that goes up, a uh, spectacular birding road. There's so many good birds along here. In the rocky areas, we can see some uh, typical birds like Buff Street Chat, um, Ground Woodpecker, and this big target, the Drakensberg rock jumper. Quite similar looking to the Cape rock jumper, but uh, it's kind of like a paler orange belly. Um, yeah, really beautiful bird. We can see um, uh, Cape rock hyraxes, or dassies as they're called uh, in South Africa. And um, we get to the um, the, uh, the border post of um, uh, at Sani Pass, and we can cross over into the kingdom of Lesotho and get a stamp in our passport. Here we find uh, the second bird that has Drakensberg in the name. This is a Drakensberg siskin. Up here, you get the, Mani, uh, the Sunny Mountain Lodge, uh, which prides itself as being the highest pub in Africa. And from here, we can look down the road that we've just driven up down into South Africa. Really spectacular scenery and a wonderful uh, way to finish the trip. Okay, that's it. We're going to drive down to Durban and that's where we, where we fly out. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's really one of my favorite trips and um, yeah, a really fan fantastic place to visit. So uh, um, I hope you'll uh, enjoy, enjoy a, a real tour, not a virtual tour there in the future.